thank you guys for joining the conversation. Today, we're really talking about transformation, not just any kind of transformation, you know, leading through transformation and specifically about cloud transformation. Now, cloud, as we all know, is a very overused term, like many of them are. And when we talk about cloud transformation, what is a cloud? How do we, you know, what's our relationship with cloud? Is it a place? Is it a working model? All those different things are part of that conversation. So I want to ground us first and have some context. JD, when you think about cloud and what it is, what, give me a sense from your work, from your team and the work that you have to do, you know, with cloud transformation, what does it mean to, you know, what does it mean, you know, in a concrete sense of what is a cloud? How are you doing a cloud transformation? What does that even mean for you and your team? Mm -hmm. uh, well, thank you for the question. The cloud for me and my team means a workload that's being processed. And from an operational standpoint, it grows and scales as the workloads grow. And so for uh, producing that from a, from a network standpoint or from a workload or even a pod standpoint, you just need that to grow as the scale grows. And uh, can that workload be anywhere? Is it, that- It could be anywhere. On, on premises, cloud. in the cloud, uh, yeah, and it could be a virtualized it. mainframe under somebody's desk. Yes. Is that a cloud? So what, what, what do you say, what makes it a cloud? You know, it's a workload, it's running somewhere. What makes it a, a cloud versus maybe just- Resiliency has to be there, confidentiality, uh, integrity, and availability always have to be there in the cloud. So your workload is always running continuously and it can be always available. That's what a cloud means to me. And that's what our team is trying to provide for our colleagues. Excellent too. And Jerry, in your work too, is that, is that some of the same definition? Does it have sort of a, a process, a workflow component to as well when you're talking about cloud? Yeah, and I, I think also um, you mentioned on-prem, which was an interesting uh, you know, question because uh, many people don't think of private clouds or on-prem private clouds as a cloud. They yeah. just think of their on-prem data centers. I know. And there's two ways to run it. You could run it as a traditional, you know, data center, or you could run it like a private cloud uh, that's on-prem or on the edge. And uh, the way how those resources are used are completely different. And I think what uh, JD was referring to is, you know, if you run your private data center the similar way how Amazon or you know, Azure or Google runs their hyperscalers, you're gonna be a lot more efficient on the utilization of those resources. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have a lot more transportability between zones because we run private clouds across multiple on-prem locations and we could, we could shift workloads between them very easily. Um, and we also can shift workloads from on-prem to the cloud, uh, more of like a hybrid and not just from like a DR perspective, but also from a burst perspective. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I also think, uh, you know, there's multiple ways, uh, you know, you, you may have heard the term uh, cloud first, yeah. you know, people uh, just, you know, putting, moving their workloads uh, from on-prem to the cloud. Um, and if you take a, um, I'll call it like a very simplistic view of that, it could be as simple as like just taking all my VMs and moving them to a single cloud in a single region, and that wouldn't be very smart. So I, I think of like a smart cloud. How do I actually take advantage of the features of the cloud so that I can increase my resiliency of my applications, um, uh, burst capabilities, lowering my cost? Um, so there's many different aspects of how I can leverage the cloud to my advantage versus just moving my stuff there. Yeah, and so it sounds like the way you're referring to is almost like a mind shift. And uh, mind shift is, you know, one of the recurring themes that's been throughout some of our discussions. And you're shifting the way that you look at, say, like, you know, an on-prem environment and saying, look, I'm going to operationalize this and I'm going to work it and look like, you know, I'm going to make it look like a cloud and feel like a cloud. And I'm going to change the way I work, you know, as and treating it like a cloud that makes that a cloud. So I kind of wanted to level set a little bit, too. And and some of the transformation, I think, that you that, that the two of you have worked through in your teams has been shifting some of the mind shift, uh, mindset and, and how you look at these environments, how you treat them, how your workflow, you know, operates on your operation models, you know, operate around them. Give me a sense of like now that you're doing this cloud transformation, what is that? And, you know, in that context, in that definition of what a cloud is, what does that transformation look like and how has it been leading through that transformation? You want to start here? Yeah, it's, I think uh, it's even the way we start building our applications are shaping up differently. Um, you know, uh, if I look at our, our Tanz, Tanzu portfolio that's more on a Kubernetes-based uh, stack, it's, it's a much different game from when you build applications on a VM. When, when I build things on a VM, 
it's almost like server hugger. Yes. You, you ask a developer, mm -hmm. what do yeah. you need? He'll, he'll just I'll give need everything. The, I need the biggest I need box I can possibly I need the, get. The biggest, heaviest runtime environment I possibly can get because I don't know what libraries I need <laughs> versus a light runtime environment where I only need exactly what I need. It's a different, I imagine that's a big shift in the way that you're approaching application development. And just scale out, horizontally scaling out. And, and you know, it's, so it's a different mindset, like creating disposable infrastructure. It's a totally different relationship. You know, it's some, it's interesting because somebody, somebody said it when they were like, building that environment, like the Kubernetes or that, you know, that cloud environment, they were talking about how like, I'm going to use my Lego blocks. I'm going to create something so the developers can have a seamless experience. And, but then at the same time, if you're working in an environment where this is different and, and everyone's like, well, come to this environment, but we're not, you're, you're looking at sort of disposable infrastructure. You've got to now play in a different world. Like you said, you've got to develop applications differently. And when you're talking to teams, you're talking, you know, whether it's developers, or you're talking to teams that work with developers, how are you helping to shift that? You know, when you're leading through that transformation, how are you helping to shift the mindset, shift the operational model? Because, you know, change everyone says like they like love transforming, but they don't like changing. That's everything. That's everybody. How are you helping to make that change and, and make that transformation when, when they're used to working in that other environment? One, one example is, um, as we're building out more and more SaaS services for our customers, one of the highest things is to have uh, as little downtime as possible. Uh, we're actually trying to track towards four nines of availability at six minutes of downtime a month. You know, to some teams that seems crazy. Um, our goal is actually zero minutes of downtime. Like yeah. I want to do less than six minutes per month. Mm -hmm. And when you start building services on modern uh, stacks, and you start doing things like blue-green deployments or canary deployments that you can do on a Kubernetes stack, which you couldn't do necessarily on, on a VM traditional stack. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of those things for free. And so now teams are starting to see the value on how they can achieve some of these goals and, and uh, in a much easier way uh, and actually learn something new that you know, they weren't able to do before. And one of the things that uh, my team's leaning in on and helping with this uh, business transformation um, is really about building a platform with multiple VMware products to build a solution where all the modern applications can sit on and then have a high availability in the cloud, in multi-cloud, and also have connectivity back to VMware where the developers can start building their products and exploding their potential in the cloud and pulling the, pulling the workloads back when they need to. So um, it's, it's nice to be able to, to help support the business outcomes or business, business um uh, objectives that you know are, the platform sits on top of by using the Tanzu platform, the modern apps platform, and many other uh, foundational components in the uh, NSBU, the Network Services Business Unit. All those stitched together helps build this platform where all these apps sit on. We have a lot of monolithic applications that are being redesigned into a modern approach now, um, and you know when we refactor it into that platform they can auto scale onto this platform and the business moves at the pace of business now, instead of waiting for waterfall approaches and waiting for, you know, keep waiting. And then now we're, we're moving the weight. Now let's move fast. Exactly, exactly. And it must be, there must be also an exciting component of it because you're getting some of this stuff before it's GA. You're getting to see some of the solutions when they're first coming, rolling off the factory line and getting to use them. And so there has to be a little bit of excitement, a little bit of buzz from the teams to be able to say, look, we can do something new. We're going to be able to be the first ones because you're, you're, you're part of that customer zero team yeah. who gets to use the stuff right off of the rack before everyone else gets to use it and be able to, to then work with and also the development and do, like you said, some of the early deployments and see what's possible. I mean, that, that must be kind of really interesting to see not only are like, are we, you know, this is what we're doing with some of these great tools, but also we're doing it a little bit earlier than other people get to do it. As customer zero, uh, which a lot of us uh, and I, as IT practitioners lean in on different products that we're uh, subject matter experts in with the different product teams. And we sit side by side with them to help evaluate, you know, what our business case is, what are the capabilities and functions that we require, and are those built into the product? If not, let's, let's work together as a design partner to make sure that this is the right outcome for VMware. And if we know if we can scale at VMware size, we know that we can meet most customers' demands uh, right out of the box. And that's what gets us excited about customer zero and, and customer number one helps us put that all that work and effort into production where we can see the fruits of our labor. And then we share those stories with customers, share our uh, bumps and bruises along the way and share our best practices. And customers like to see, you know, hear from an IT pr practitioner standpoint, you know, uh, an IT practitioner and IT practitioner conversation about how, how we did it, how we're leveraging it and at scale. 
it's it's and it's also amazing to see the relationships within vmware uh really grow between uh ourselves and the different pro the business product teams because they they see us as like their biggest customer advisory board that they could ask for mm -hmm. um and you know their product management teams like we're we're handing them stuff on silver platters on things that like every customer wants and, and, they, and they don't have that insight because they don't necessarily yeah. run those kinds of workloads so they really depend on on customer insight to figure that out and i get all excited about this topic because we we build a good framework in our vmware on vmware um you know practice where we, we have a foundational components of what we call, you know, quarterly based product reviews. And we meet not only just the product managers, but they're uh, next to level up, level up all the way up to the VPs. And then include uh, the SVP and GM of the particular business unit. And this is where, you know, it is a blameless session. We just share our common business practices about what we're trying to achieve. You know, the financial results of us achieving these results and where we need their help. And then everyone has alignment around that conversation and then priorities start shifting and multiple workloads start happening after the fact. So like those, those things happen across the board through multiple business units at VMware. We're most proud of that. Nice. And so this, this has been a journey. So there's been transformation kind of, kind of taking where you were before and saying, look, at, we need to, we're on this journey of doing this cross cloud thing. We're doing this from Cloudcast to cloud smart. And this is important because we're seeing customers. I, I sit down with CIOs who are grappling with this all the time. They have all these different, you know, heterogeneous environments and they need to be able to ha run, you know, you know, heterogeneous, you know, security across it. They need to be compliant across all their environments. And all these things need to be able to coordinate in certain ways from a deployment to, to, you know, to, to, to a management to upgrade and all those things need to happen. But you're at the forefront. And you started out with, okay, how are we going to do that? What, is, what are some of the, the tools that are kind of rolling off the lines? And how are those, like you said, being stitched into solutions? What was that like? Can I describe how those things started to come together? And you started to see how you were able to stitch different environments together and have them to be able to work in a more seamless way. Mm -hmm. Not perfect, but moving towards that sort of that seamless way to have consistent you know, operational model across all the environments. Well, as the company moved from subscription to SaaS, you know, uh, always had a multi-cloud focus. You know, we latched onto that early because we we were leveraging the cloud and uh, as as a team, and we wanted to be a part of that journey. And we saw a vision that we could say, "Look, we we know we want to move that way internally as well with our applications. We can help provide this platform that can do that." And it took iterations, of course, but we got there. And then that's what I think we're most proud of is we built a solid platform leveraging VMware's products, and it's enabling the business to grow and and perform. Yeah, and one one thing I would also highlight is. You know, I was I was there in the beginning of the whole cloud journey, and uh, it is true. Uh, each co every company has multiple cloud relationships with all the hyperscalers, and what is the universal truth that I've seen in every company, including VMware? It's really hard to do one cloud well. <laughs> yeah, it's almost yeah. impossible to do two of them really well. Yes, and that that deserves repeating. As it's yeah. not easy. This is hard. This stuff is hard. <laughs> and you guys are solving hard problems, and you're helping others who are solving them. Yeah. So can you imagine, like, if you were actually able to leverage your skills that you have to universally answer how to run uh, uh, networking, how to run data storage, how to run compute in in a in a universal way across multiple clouds. Um, because like it's hard to do it once, but if you could repeat it across any cloud provider, including on-prem, that's like a slam dunk. And so JD, Jerry, you're figuring that out for everybody, right? Yeah. I want to see the roadmap for that. <laughs> well, I want to say that with that, I think it was really great, fabulous having you guys on the show. Um, fabulous conversation. Um, JD, Jerry, if anybody wants to find out more about you, um, where can they find you in that digital world? You can find us on VMware.com. We have a, a site for VMware on VMware. Look us up. It's on the bottom of your screen. All right. Well, thank you both. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.